and we're back with poet Rosemary Watola Traumer. Hi, Rosemary. Hello, Alyssa. Thank you for being here. I'm delighted to be here. So this is really a treat for me because Rosemary is actually my hero and mentor in the poetry world um, and served as Poet Laureate, San Miguel County Poet Laureate, um, many moons ago before I got to become San Miguel Poet Laureate. And so we're also part of the same legacy. And um, it's such a thrill to have you here today. So yeah, tell us about how you came to Telluride, your origin story. So when I first came to Telluride, 1993, I was with my girlfriend uh, from Germany, Babette. And we had been in Wisconsin. We were traveling uh, from Wisconsin all the way out here because she'd never been anywhere but Wisconsin in the United States. And I said, you need to know there's more. So we came out here, and I'd never been to Telluride before, even though I'd, I'd lived for 10 years in Colorado. So we drove all the way out and uh, had no idea how expensive it was going to be. And we were like, well, I guess we're going to have to leave. But we walk into the new Sheridan, which was under construction. Wow. And we got a room for $10 a night. Wow. It had three beds. It had bunk beds, another bed, bathroom down the hall. <laughs> Because it was, cool. you know, and they were hammering all day long. And, uh, yeah, so I got, that's how I got here. And then we were walking down the street, and there was a couple of guys sitting on the porch drinking Little King beers. And yep. we talked to them for a little bit. And then one of them, Eric Tromer, says, you want to go on an adventure? I love this part. I said, sure. And he says, I'll take you to my house. And I said, no. <laughs> and he says, uh... Oh, come on. And then the other guy says, that's a really good offer. Everybody in town wants that offer. Okay, where's your house? And it was uh, what's now become Alpino Vino. But at the time, he had just wow. finished building it. Wow. That was back in 93. And he'd been in it for all of a week. And uh, Babette and I went up and spent the night. And then a romance began. The rest was history. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> I finished grad school and moved here in 94. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And you actually lived in that house. On for the, seven years. For seven years. Yeah. Until the ski resort, I assume, acquired it. The, when uh, Joe Morita required the ski area, then he, he flew over it and said, what's that? And, and bought it. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So in terms of bringing poetry to our little community, I mean, in a sense... I haven't heard of poetry being around before Rosemary Watola Trauma. Oh. You're sort of the bearer of the seed. <laughs> but it was. But it was. But it was. So, so when I came in 94, one of the very first people I met was Art Good Times. Oh, right. And right. Art was the, uh, the arts editor at the Telluride Times Journal. So he hired me on as a stringer. And then, you know, I, I remember. What's a stringer? A stringer? I don't even know what that oh, is, is a. a person who writes articles for the paper but doesn't actually work for the paper oh uh, okay cool. cool so it's a so non-staff can... position mm. and so I I, uh, I remember giving art a couple of my poems and art read them and he said these are nice <gasps> what he, he says, hit you with nice and then he said I wonder what would happen if you relaxed <laughs> <laughs> So I, I did. I, I had to relax. I had to, that was it was wonderful to meet Art right off the bat because Art was this enormous poetry presence. He has this gorgeous, generous spirit to him. Yeah. Like let's all do this. Let's yeah. play. Yeah. And and that was very different from the poetry environment in graduate school, which was you know, uh, there's not enough pie, so I'm going to eat it all, oh. and you don't get any. And and the the whole feel over here on the western slope was anything but that it was so supportive and friendly and engaged wow. and let's all play oh yeah. i love that me too I love that. me too i learned a lot from art yeah well and yeah. you guys have cultivated such a wonderful friendship and then here comes me a few years later many moons later and um you really did the same thing for me so i was so i was so honored to have you and art kind of say like hmm, yeah that's what you got going that's cool like keep doing that and <laughs> Try this, too, and maybe try that. So I love um, that you've now become sort of part of the mentorship as well. And it's pretty awesome to have feel? an Alyssa come along. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant that more as a segue to talk about another part of your talent that I really love, which is um, Rosemary is an incredible teacher, not just a writer of poetry herself. But um, I've had the chance to take some of your classes, and 
I feel like the way you cultivate a safe space and you really allow people to shine and um, it's really neat because I think there's some cliche, right, that those that can do can't teach and those that can teach can't do. And that's just simply not the case in general, hence why we don't use cliches in poems, <laughs> um, but definitely not the case with you. So I guess, do you want to speak a little bit to what it's like to teach first write and what mm -hmm. you enjoy more or how well, you Well, teaching and writing are really two different ways to play in one playground, right? I mean, if yeah. we consider poetry as a huge playground, when we write, typically it's alone. It's a very solitary endeavor, Yeah. right? And, and I love that. I love being all alone and, and just getting in there, as A.R. Ammon says, picking away at your own liver. Uh, but I also love people. It's a nice and visual. I love what happens when we get together. <laughs> yeah. I love what happens when we get together and play. That's what happens in a classroom. And I do think that everyone can write. I really think everyone Absolutely. can write. You yes. know, can you make a list? Then you can write a poem. Yeah. Some of the best poems are just lists. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess to speak to that, I feel like I wrote poetry or did slam poetry before I really had any idea what poetry was. I'd mm -hmm. seen slam poetry and so I emulated that, talking about issues. But I felt like you had so many little nuggets of what a poem really is that's so helpful to people who don't do poetry often. And if you want to maybe just share one, of, the one that's coming to mind, of course, is like um, the showing and telling or the like oh, internal yeah. emotional <laughs> landscape meeting external physical landscape yeah. and so i do like yeah, to think of a poem as as being a bridge between worlds right yeah. so the poem helps us bridge what's happening outside of us and what's happening inside of us and that's why i do like to say uh it, it often the, the advice that most people give writers is show don't tell and i say no 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 show and tell it's yeah. really important um, yeah. you want an example yes we would love All an right. example from one so of these this views. is uh i'll do the the title poem from my new book, Naked for Tea, and uh, it goes like this. That's right. I showed up naked for tea. I know it's not the proper thing to do. I had on more clothes when I left the house, and I'm a bit surprised myself to find I'm wearing nothing more than this pink scarf. <sighs> At least it is soft the scarf. At least it is warm, the tea. You don't have to pretend you don't notice. I won't either. We'll just go on. It is a bit awkward at first, as most things are, but maybe by the time you pass the cream, you too will have gotten out of your own button-up shirt, your judgment, your embarrassment your belt, maybe it will be so wonderful, this lack of anything between us, that by the time we get to the bottom of our cups, we'll wonder why we would ever spend an afternoon together any other way. Yeah, <laughs> I love that one. Yes, so beautiful. And that is from um, Rosemary's newest book, Naked for Tea, which is absolutely outstanding. If you're looking for a daily practice, just what I love to do, which is read a poem every morning, um, it's great for that. If you're looking for a gift for friends, it's just such a gorgeous book, Rosemary. You did, you did such an amazing job. And I mean, look at the cover even. I know you didn't have much to do with that, but I think it really sums up um, how I think of your poetry, which is that you make it you make it cool and you make it okay to not be perfect. And you really show the vulnerable side and the beauty and the wonder. And I think um, the book is really all about vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yeah. The one word spiel would be vulnerability. Vulnerability. <laughs> um, um, people can check out my poems. I write a poem every day. I've done that for over 10 years. Cool. And people can check them out at 100fallingveils.com. Awesome. And uh, you can check out my website, wordwoman.com. It has lots of information about where I'll be performing and teaching next and what's coming up. Yeah, and Rosemary is a regular teacher at the AHA um, school and at the library for that matter. So Lost in Motherland looks at writing into being a mother. Um, so tons of opportunities to engage either with her work or with her as a teacher. Um, and thank you so much for being here, Rosemary. This Thanks, Alyssa. such a treat. Thanks for coming to Telluride. <laughs> <laughs> right back at you.